A bit of a lesson in old school football for United's under 21s there tonight. We just spoke to Travis Binion, United's under 21 manager there, and he said in his words, we just struggled with the directness of Wrexham. That's what it was. We also spoke with Ben Foster, and he think he said that was their game plan all along. The United Stand pre-season tour sponsored by Manscaped. Discover the power of three with Manscaped's unique trimmers. Get the right tools for the job at manscaped.com. Manscaped, your body will thank you. That long ball, the over the top, something that technical players or the way that these players at United are being taught to play, they're just not used to. League two, National League, Wrexham, they play a different way. It's a bit more physical, it's more direct. Like I said, the long ball over the top that causes problems really does. Because at the start of this game, the first 10 minutes, Manchester United were playing well. They were passing the ball around well and it was in control. They were playing as they normally would. But one ball over the top caused panic over the top of Johnny Evans. And then Nathan Bishop got caught in the middle, got caught in two minds. And then obviously we've seen that nasty clash with Mullen and Bishop. And obviously we found out later now that Mullen has gone to hospital with a punctured lung. And Nathan Bishop hasn't. Uh, he's, he's not dealing with it very well I did speak to Ben Foster regarding what happened with that he spoke to him on the pitch and he has spoke to him afterwards as well and said he's not he's not comfortable he's got his number he's going to give him a ring to make sure he's okay let's not forget he is comfortable at the, he's not comfortable at the moment but he is stable obviously Mullen it's just when something like that happens it kind of shocks another player especially the one who's been involved in the incident and obviously a young academy player like that at first, you're going to struggle to come to terms with something like that. It is quite nasty. So, yeah, and I thought that moment there, that sort of curtailed any sort of progress that there was going on at the start of the game because, like I said, United were playing their game and then it sort of switched. Then it went into, like, Wrexham getting that long ball over the top, turning United's defenders, that little bit of uncertainty, constant long throw-ins into the box, crosses going in. Two goals that we conceded in the first half were both from that flick on and that header at the back stick and United just didn't adapt to it well. So you're looking at that, then can you just get back in the game? Don't go any further behind. Stay in the game till half-time. Even better, Gerardo comes up with a good goal and probably deserved for United. They were probing, although they weren't really causing many problems for Ben Foster in the Wrexham goal. They were making progress. They were controlling the game a little bit more. Got the rhythm and mojo back. So you go in at half-time, 2-1, you're thinking early goal in the second half, it was the complete opposite. And the referee came in for some shtick uh, in that game there. He was a bit card happy, in my opinion. And the media f was pretty much unanimous on that wasn't a red card for Dan Gore. I think the referee was, I think he was a bit too keen in terms of wanting to make a big, big decision. The yellow cards were flying. He was making a big point about it. But that tackle for us, I mean, you probably would have said Nathan Bishop's challenge on Mullen was more of a red card than what Gore's was. Was he making up for that by making that red card decision? Because he didn't give the one early doors for Nathan Bishop. I don't know where he was, but the general consensus up in the press box was that on the replay, that wasn't a red card for Dan Gore. He'll feel unlucky tonight. There's a couple of United players there going back to the hotel, a little bit dejected and a bit disappointed because it was a big opportunity. We talked about this in the preview. We said this was their moment to actually show Ten Hag that they can do something. There's already the likes of Kobe Maynou, Garnacho in the first team squad right now on its way to Houston. This is what happens. And they'll feel disappointed that they didn't get the result that they wanted tonight. The performance there was very, very good in parts. I thought Hannibal was outstanding and by far the best player on the pitch. Even Ben Foster said he was man of the match. He said he's one of them players that he's just really annoying, but you just love him at the same time. He's that type of player. He's like, you love him when he's on your team, but you can't stand him if he's in the opposition. That's that type of player, but they, that's what United are built, built off. Them players that wind up the opposition, not afraid to take the ball. They were taking the ball in very awkward positions on the pitch, on the edge of their own 16-yard, 18-yard box, in, in positions within their own box, with press coming from Wrexham, and physicality as well. They still kept doing it. Dan Gore was doing it, Hannibal was doing it, Alvaro Fernandez, I thought he was excellent as well today. They were all doing it and taking the ball in these compromising positions and having the confidence to do it. And they kept doing it, and they kept doing it. And that's what kept them in the game, controlling the ball and still trying to play their way. That's what Ten Hag is trying to instill in this system. When we spoke to Travis Binion there, he said himself there, we struggled in part with the physical side and the directness of it, but they still learn from that. They've got to learn how to adapt to moments in games, like what happened with the injury and then with the red card. Unfortunately, that old school crosses into the box, physicality, one on 
in the end of the day, it was just one of them games. You'll learn from it and probably come away from this game better off than what Wrexham did. Yes, Wrexham will enjoy the whole party and everything that was going on here. It's a brilliant story that's going on there and everyone is just on board with it and it's just a fairy tale going on right now. And they will love this league too. They've got a lot of excitement to come. And obviously, they'll look forward to their season now going in. And Ben Foster said that was the best they've played all pre-season. So, yeah, they've upped the game for this one and they've got their first win. It has been a great season, a great pre-season, sorry for them already. But I think United will come away from this more positive than what Wrexham will. Big learning, big lessons. So when them under-21 players sit back on that coach on the way back to the hotel, they'll feel that, that disappointment of not getting the result, obviously. But... They'll sit back and they'll go, right, what can I learn from that game? There were positives. We were controlling the game up until the, ma the nasty injury to Mullen. They were in complete control and by far the better team. They fought back from 2-0 down when it could have just been an absolute disaster and a walkover for Wrexham because every time they put across in the box, it looked like it was going to go in. We adapted to it. We were coming back into it. We came in half-time, just one behind. And then we got the red card. And without the red card, I probably would have thought United would have gone on to really challenge in that second half. I think we would have just gone on and got the equaliser, possibly a winner. We had talent coming off the bench. And ultimately, ultimately, excuse me, ultimately, you look at it and go, the red card changed the game. I think Travis did say that as well. He said the red card and Ben said it as well in his interview. It was literally the game over when that red card came in. Like... There's only so much you can do. An under-21 team playing against a fully professional side on a high, full promotion, physically grown men, like fully filled out men, it makes a big difference. That tackle going in when you're chasing it with 10 men is completely different to when it's a level playing field. Little mind games and little things creep in and it always sort of distract away from what was working before. Moments, like Travis said, in the professional game, you have to learn from that. It's like adapting to the negative side of things, adapting to that bad decision that you didn't get. There was a little bit of petulance from uh, Hannibal. He was being kicked. I think he got fouled about 10, 10 times to my count in the end. One of the Wrexham players got booked who hadn't challenged him before simply because it was multiple bookings. The ref made a point of saying, look, he's been flattened five times in a row. The next one that comes in is going to get a yellow card. He sort of, and we've seen it with him before, he has got that nasty streak. He has got that side to him where he can actually lash out, his temper can kick in and he can go into a challenge. But he handled it a lot better tonight, I thought, Hannibal. And I do believe that he deserved that man of the match title. I think he was the best player on the park and I think he will learn from this tonight. Then challenging he was t challenges he was taking and getting back up and keep on doing it, like I said, he got challenged to give a free kick away and it was quite a nasty one. It was a bad landing. I think one of them even gave him cramp and he needed treatment. He got straight back up and took the ball on the edge of the 18-yard box and carried on playing. Two minutes later, he was back in the corner flagging the opposition half, fighting and tackling for the ball again. That there is a sign of a player that isn't scared to lose, isn't scared to miss, isn't scared to take that risk. That ultimately is a United player. That's what it takes with the right guidance and with Eric Ten Hag there, with Travis Binion, you've got to look at that and go, well, you've got the perfect mentors. Travis has got these players playing well. This was a manager that got us our first FA Youth Cup win in over a decade. Now with Ten Hag behind him and the new structure coming in, you've got to look at that and go, this now is the time for these players. These young players have got the best setup going. It'll be really, really interesting now what happens with the rest of this under-21 squad because most of them now will go back home. Will some of them stay? Well, may, we may see the likes of Hannibal stay. We may see the likes of one of the goalkeepers stay or something like that. But you got to look at it now and go, it's going to be very interesting what happens in the loan market now when these players go back to Manchester. I think that's key now from this. And like I said, the big thing that we take from this and this game here tonight was, and I said this to Travis as well, I said the important thing was you were missing players today from the under-21s team simply because they're already with the first team. That is their goal. That is their ultimate target to get these players, nurture them through and get them into that first team and contribute there. And we're missing the likes of Garnacho, Mainu, players like this, Amari Forson. They're all with the first team squad. They would have been playing tonight. But no, that's what it's all about. And that's what the rest of these players playing tonight will look at and go, I take this, I learn from this and I move forward. 
It's been a very, been a very, very good learning curve for this young side, and I think they will come out with this better off than what Wrexham will. It just takes a bit of time to set it, let it sink in, but take the positive from it, and there is positives for this under-21 side tonight. Let me know what you think, guys. Obviously, it's a disappointment to lose a game. We move on to Real Madrid. Game's coming thick and fast now. First team is back on the agenda. We'll see you guys in Houston. Like, share, and subscribe to the United Stand, everybody. We're out of here tonight. Bring on Houston.